OK, calls on whether <laughs> you would comply with another lockdown. And not you, nope. in Hertfordshire. Hello. Yeah, I suppose we'd have to, but I'd like to talk about the COVID inquiry itself. I think it's a massive, massive insult to everyone who died. Because of the language that's coming out? Yeah, I think it's a massive insult to people that died and they should stop it now. Oh, what, because, you, you it know... Gets worse. It's really upsetting to watch. But we've, uh, I suppose we've you been know, through... they at each other. It's, it's like children at school. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But we've been through the pain barrier a bit with the parties, haven't we? So we know... Yeah. There was a lack of respect in there. Yeah, but they should have a, a bit of respect for the families who lost their loved ones. And, I, and is it not that the inquiry is an insult to the families, but some of the, you know, Dominic Cummings, uh, Boris yeah. Johnson? They, they, it's, yeah. you know, if you're yeah. if you're a family or I you're, I hope they're not getting paid because if they're getting paid, that'll be a yeah. bigger insult. But don't don't you want to know what really went on? No, I don't care. All I know is people died around the country and the stupid MPs did what they did. Yeah. And I don't need to an inquiry to know what they did again. I mean, okay. I'm not interested. And I hear you. Thank you so much. Terry in Blackpool. Hi. Hello. You, would you comply with the next lockdown, Terry? I mean, Kevin's portrayed this idea of a disease where you're bleeding from the nose and ears. But I don't know if it'll be that serious. No, I wouldn't comply with another lockdown. Basically, because, I mean, the, I don't know why everybody's so surprised at what's coming out of this inquiry, because everybody knows what they are, and they're all tarred with the same brush. It doesn't matter whether it's Conservative, Labour, I won't even mention the other party. Well, Basically, uh, at the root of it, they don't care. Listen, they said, let's send them 300 quid for Christmas. That'll keep them quiet, the general public. Rishi Sunak spends that on a pair of shoes. Oh, they we do would never buy a pair the, of that cheap. At the root of it, the government doesn't care about... Is, is that right? Are we being unfair public? to politicians here, Anne? I think a little unfair, yes. And, and I think what we had, and, and, and what accounts for the goings-on in Downing Street... We had a very unexpected, extremely serious, challenging situation. Um, and, you know, there are people who react in different ways to that. Now, uh, I, to me, the, the major thing about this inquiry is not who said what to whom in Downing Street. The major part of this is, did we get lockdown right? If we didn't, why didn't it work? And what should we do differently next time? Yeah. Or if it did work, then should we moderate it next time? What should we do about the old folks in homes next time? You want to ask all these questions. That's what I well, maybe expect that's... to come out of an inquiry. Well, hopefully Not they'll... who said what to who. No, hopefully they will come to that. But you're right, a lot of sweary, sweary Mary going on doesn't help us. Terry, thank you. Joanne in Sunderland. Hi, Joanne. Kevin's neck of the woods. Hello. Hiya. I was going to say, do you know, Kevin? But that's a silly, typical <laughs> Southerners <laughs> question there. There is rather a lot of us, uh, no, Joanne. I know. I know. <laughs> so, so what do you want to say, Joanne? I just want to say that um, it's all well and good saying no, but we were all terrified in the hospitals and there was no bed. Like, people were really sick. So if we didn't do lockdown, where would everybody have gone? There would have been anarchy. Well, this is the, that, that's true, actually, isn't it? That with the idea that the NHS would collapse if we just yeah. simply let the virus rip, and that's well, the, the problem. Well, the were never used, and, and they were... Well, they didn't really know. have the staff. I mean, I, as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we would have risen to whatever we had to rise to. My point is a much broader one, which is that I think people had to make their own judgments. Now, some people would make bad judgments. Mm. Uh, but most of us are grown-ups and, and would make sense sure. of judgment. But, but hang on, there's a social thing, right, isn't there, about can we do, do we have to protect the NHS or can we just say, look, it's 1,600 deaths a day at the moment, we'll take it to 3,000. We, we, have, we have to have collective responsibility. We have to protect the NHS. We have to pre you talk about the elderly and the vulnerable. W what people aren't really saying is the fact that within that vulnerable category were the obese people. And one, of the, re one of the reasons that Sweden coped with it so well was that because they have a much healthier, wealthier population and also more compliant. So they did self-distancing, and but they were also healthy to start with so they could cope with it. Now, so how do we cope with the obese in this country if I need another lockdown? Put people on scales and said, you're behind, you're well, behind you want, your front you door? You essentially want the... I hate to talk about obese people as they're a separate category, no, but no. you want obese people to, to be, be locked away against their will. Anne is saying, let them make a choice.
Well, that, that's, uh, you say make a choice, but then, uh, my point again is that it's not just your health, it's the fact that you mm. can pass it on to somebody who is more vulnerable than you. Yeah. That is the so nature I, of the beast. In the, in the end, do, do you feel sorry for the Scottish MP? Was it Margaret Ferrier? No, yep. I do no. not feel you sorry. Don't, why don't you feel... Well, I'll she, tell you she exactly. did what you no, did, which no, is no, break no. the rules. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, you know, as far as I was concerned, if you actually had it and you knew you had it, I mean, a lot of people didn't know, but if you knew you had it, then at that point you really do have a responsibility to stay right away from other people. But, but I didn't say go the, mad. Is, I didn't say disregard the rules altogether. I said make judgments. And I cannot... I cannot for the life of me understand why anybody would get on a crowded train knowing that that person mm. had COVID. I don't understand so it. I are. really so don't understand enough. it. So you are coming round to restrictions where no, you're no, just no. not allowed to make your own choice because no man or woman is an island. We're all social creatures mm. and we interact. It's why you have, to have, you have to have rules about how you drive, otherwise everyone would just be careering wherever they want. And if you've got an infectious disease, you need rules and regulations, which most people will obey, to stop them spreading it. So they might be all right themselves, but they can kill other people. But the point is that in Sweden, where they didn't have the restrictions, people did. But they may be but, more yeah, sensible. Just, they I may be more are. sensible Can I finish, Jeremy? No. Right, OK. <laughs> no, sorry, no, sorry, just wait, just let me take a call. No, you've spoken. No, come on. You've had a good shout. Um, Trevor in Tunbridge Wells, hello. Good morning. Hi. We're going to bring Anne back in soon or she's Oh, gonna... don't worry. Let's hear Blow from Trevor. Come on, Trevor. You, you said, what, would you obey the next lockdown? The first, I would, yes, but I would look at it differently because the first question I would say is how many people's lives did the politicians save with lockdown? I wouldn't look at the number of people that died. If we didn't have a lockdown, how many more would have died? Well, look, I'm going to give you a ballpark figure. Gone up to about we, we lost 200,000 without any lockdown at all. I'm going to suggest we would have lost another 200,000. Now, the, the statisticians were saying you'd lose more. But they didn't factor in Anne's point, which is that we would all start taking defensive action for ourselves. Make judgment. So, Trevor, you know, you've got to hope you'd keep the number down just because people would have acted defensively. But if you're in uncharted waters, you have absolutely no idea what you're dealing with. What do you do? Because I would put I would put all the journalists and all the media that have been very quick to criticize and bring down the politicians for handling it in the way they did and put them in their place and see how they would handle mm. it. Well, yeah. And a lot of the journalists call, they, they, they act as if it is the received wisdom now that lockdown should have been harder and earlier. Well, there is received wisdom that says that. There is also a very sizable group of people uh, who think the exact opposite and who look at places like Sweden. Um, and, for example, I mean, I, I thought the politicians did go mad occasionally. I mean, the curfew, the curfew, which meant everybody came out onto the streets at the same time uh, when the curfew ended, uh, and when it began, rather, and, and were there, uh, you know, blowing COVID around the place. It was insane. Well, the, it was mad insane. Yeah, the maddest teenagers thing... teenagers yeah. running the country. You had a, an education secretary, Gavin Williams, who was obviously completely... In yeah, but maybe that's who we've got now in, in, in terms of our politicians. We've lost your generation. Chris in Manchester, hi. Morning, folks. Would you um, obey the next lockdown, Chris? That's the question. No, not at all. Um, can, I, can I just say a couple of things? And they're, they're more statements than... Rhetorical questions. Uh, um, yes. Have you have you all seen the film Contagion? Well, that's the question. 2011. Yeah. Um, well, just to say, that was the trial run for what we went through. OK? Secondly, um, Kevin, for you, you've talked a lot, and, and uh, Nina, sorry, you've talked a lot about stats. There was a stat that GB News put out. Now, I know that that's not going to be a popular statement. It's not a good start. No. They're not. But, but... They put a stat out in um, 2022, 700,000 people died in the UK in 2021. Only, have a guess, how many died directly as a result of COVID? No underlying conditions. How many? 10%. I don't actually know that, yeah. 17,000. Oh, so much less. Percent. OK. Well, and we locked the whole of the... I nearly lost my business because of... Lockdown. Yeah, no, I, have, I hear you. I hear, Nina? 5% of the population died. And this is, this is more than in France, than Italy. No, not than Italy. Italy was below us. Um, France, Spain, Germany. It, it goes, in terms of people lost per percentage, it goes United States, Poland, Italy, then the UK. 
But yeah, but that might mean the lockdown was a waste of time. I mean, that's... No, no, well, no, well, no, no, what you need with the inquiry is, look, no, no two countries are the same. There'll be lessons to be learned, there'll be lessons to be avoided. I want the inquiry to look at it in a very yeah. cold, yeah. calculating yeah. way. Yeah. And yeah. Think Come up yeah. what works and what well, we'll doesn't. We'll I think that's so important. We'll see what Boris Johnson says. They, they, uh, that yeah. is important. They, what yeah. came out, they said if they'd shut, we'd shut our borders and at the end of December 2019 and had a test and trace, the, the lockdowns would not have been necessary. Well, big thank you to Nina for coming and joining us on this discussion.